it's just about being consistent with it. Um, anybody, any team can do it one night or two nights in a row. You just got to be consistent with it. So um, we've been saying since the beginning of the year that we've had the talent. And unfortunately, we haven't had the uh, – we've had a little bit of the injury bug on our side to start the season. Um, but having guys back now and hopefully for the – for the rest of the season, it can help us um, string together some wins and propel us forward to where we, we want to go and where we need to be. Welcome in Hawks fans. Your boy Bryce is back again for another Believe in Hawks episode coming off a victory over the L.A. Lakers. 138-122, to the Hawks dominating the Lakers in State Farm Arena tonight in the City Edition uniform. So we're going to break that all down on today's episode of Believe in the Hawks. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Bryce for 2K and subscribe, like the video, whatever platform you're listening to at the same time. Let's get into it right now. Hawks playing one of their best games they've played in a while. Also, one of the first times they have been at full strength in the top eight of their rotation. DeAndre Hunter making it with his way back to the rotation. Came off the bench tonight, but played well in the limited minutes that he played. He was on a minutes restriction. Quinn Snyder before the game saying that he was going to be playing in the teens. Played approximately 16 minutes tonight. Obviously, stat line isn't crazy, but you could feel his impact on the floor as the Hawks are able to do more when he is available for them. And like I said, I made this uh, tweet on Twitter. The Hawks were a 500 to a by, above 500 team with them at full strength. The problem is, is that roster construction is so bad that if they have one injury, it takes them like we've seen. If you, if you don't believe me, Trey Young's dad, Rayford, liked it on Twitter, so he also agrees with me because at the end of the day, this is what the Hawks are capable of at full strength. DeJounte seemed checked in tonight. He did not seem like he was just like, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to play. He seemed checked in. Now, could he be doing it because he was playing the Lakers and that's a team that he's been connected to? Maybe. that's potential. There's a potential for that. But at the end of the day, he's still playing for the Hawks. So if he plays well, that means good things for the Hawks. The Hawks tonight getting all of their guys in the top seven of the rotation in double figures outside of Hunter. Bay had 18. Bay has played extremely well. He has really found his his niche, which is driving the ball. He's great around the rim. I think that's what they need to keep doing with Shadiq because to keep him involved and keep him also effective offensively. Jalen Johnson, 19 and 11 tonight. He's been a bit of a double-double king recently, I feel like. He has been on the boards a lot, showing even with his size, his athleticism helps him on the boards, crashing them, and we know he can fly through the sky and make big plays. Trey Young, 26 and 13. I mean, this this was the typical Trey Young game. Six of nine from the three-point line. That tells you the three-point shot was falling tonight, and that means Trey Young was feeling good. He was getting his teammates involved. The team with 13 assists. It showed on the court tonight. DeJounte Murray hitting had a stretch where he had three straight middies in the game. Kind of was getting his speed under him from a shot perspective. Finished with 24 and nine. Almost had 10 assists, which means both of them would have had a double-double, but he was one assist short of that. Click Capella, double-double tonight from him, 13 and 12 on the boards. Bay and DeJounte Murray had the highest plus-minus on the floor for the Hawks tonight. Off the bench, Yeka Kongwu hitting a three tonight, 4-4 from the field, 11 points, four rebounds. Bogey, 18 points off the bench, and then, like I said, Hunter, Gave us six, six points today in 16 minutes in his return from action. Kobe Bufkin hitting his first NBA bucket coming in in garbage time, hitting a three to score his first. Actually, I don't know. if it, I'm not going to say it was his first NBA points because he did play in two other games before his thumb injury. So I don't want to say that. But he played tonight. I know a lot of people were excited about him getting called up. Trey Young after the game saying he's too good for the G League. We've seen the numbers Kobe Bufkin has put up in G League. He has put up monster games down there, really playing really, really well. You know, let me look up a couple for y'all right now. Let y'all know what that boy Kobe Bufkin has been doing down with the Skyhawks. I believe he just came off actually one of his best games, you know, with the Skyhawks as well. So, Overall, in his last 13 games in the G League, Kobe Bufkin was averaging basically 24 points, six rebounds, six assists, 
a steal, shooting over 44% from the field, 34% from three, shooting 83% from the free throw line. In his last game, his last game with the Skyhawks, where he got caught up tonight, 43 points, nine rebounds, just just has just been electric. And like I said, getting that type of rub, getting that type of, of praise from Trey Young saying he's too good for the G League shows you that he sees and he watches his game and knows he may be able to help us. So now we're entering a period, especially against the Lakers, coming into this game. Lakers have been up and down. I would always say one of the funniest rivalries on NBA Twitter is the Lakers fans and Darvin Ham because they absolutely hate that man. Just cannot despise. I saw some hashtag yesterday that was talking about down with the pork because his last name is Ham. I said, oh, Lord, them boys acting up. But that's what they was doing. That's what they was doing on there, man. So that was funny. And and like I said, tonight probably I I was at work, so I couldn't actually look at Lakers Twitter tonight, see what they were saying. But I'm sure it was funny. I'm sure it was funny for sure. But, you know, the Hawks tonight really just did what they needed to do. They came out. Seemed like early on they were kind of getting together, had some sloppy turnovers. But as the game went on, they cleaned it up. They they made they got stops defensively, and that was one of the biggest things. Even though the Lakers gave up one twenty two tonight, the Hawks got stops when they needed to, and that's and, and and that's how they kept the Lakers from getting back into the game. Usually, the Hawks would be up 10, 11, 12, especially the third quarter, and a team could just go on a twelve zero run. Now it's a tie game. Hawks never allowed that tonight. They were always able to keep the Lakers at bay. They were always able to keep the Lakers at a certain distance. And that was what they weren't able to do. And I've said with the top eight back, they now have the ability to do it. And that's why I think DeAndre Hunter is so important for this current version of the team because DeAndre Hunter isn't going to take shots away from Trey or DeJounte or Bay. He's going to take shots away from Garrison Matthews, Patty Mills, and, and Trent Forrest was inactive tonight, but Trent Forrest. So I've, I've, I've said, like, There are just some games where I'm like, if we could just get 12 points from DeAndre Hunter and some decent defense, we win this game. Because it's like, it's it's, it's, it's like he really doesn't have to be elite for for the Hawks to win. I personally think under Quinn Snyder, DeAndre Hunter has had a very solid year. He is shooting 40% from three, which has been a big improvement in his three point shot. He's been able to improve that, especially in the offense that, you know, Quinn wants to get up shots like that. That's big for him to be shooting that well. And so, if he's able just to give us a consistent 15, around 15 a night, to give us some good defense because that allows them to do different things defensively, the Hawks are, are in pretty good position most of the time for me. So that's obviously ideal. And what I mean when I say that they can do more defensively, w- when you have Bay in there, obviously we know limitations that Bay have defensively. So that means the Hawks have to kind of change what they want to do defensively. Um, they have to play a little bit more drop coverage. They have it puts a lot more pressure on Jalen Johnson and Clint Capella or Yeka Kongu to kind of help keep the defense connected. When DeAndre Hunter is out there, now because him and Jalen can kind of guard or are the best defenders in that in that rotation, now they can kind of they can leave DeAndre Moore on an island or leave Jalen Moore on an island against guys because they can they can kind of hold their own. You know, it's different when Jalen knows every night I'm having to guard the best team's other player because we don't have another guy who's capable. And then when you put Bay on him, it's like, you know, you know that's that's like that's like barbecue chicken, like Shaq says. When when Hunter is back, they can do more defensively, and I think you saw that tonight. Even with LeBron, you saw that tonight. You you saw that they were able to the rotations were better, communication was better, uh, just team overall team defense was better. You know, all of those things was good. LeBron only had 20 points tonight. LeBron has been notorious, especially coming to Atlanta and just dropping 30 on the Hawks. I remember last year destroying the Hawks in two games. Tonight, 7 to 17 from the field, 2 of 6. He was minus of 6 uh plus minus. Played the most minutes from anybody, but he was the most least productive. I mean, not his most least productive. That's a lie. He was not as productive as you may expect from a guy like LeBron. Their biggest point man tonight was Austin Reeves, which I mean, again, people are saying, was this a tryout for Austin Reeves? I mean, he scored 28 points, but at the end of the day, Austin Reeves is a liability defensively. And trading DeJounte Murray for Austin Reeves, I mean, as much as we want to crap on DeJounte's defense, which was better tonight as well, great effort. You know, I'm not sold on it. 
I mean, the rest of the Lakers are uh, starting lineup. De- D'Angelo gave you nine points. Hawks fans, Savage tonight, saying, we don't want you. They were shouting that at D'Lo at the free throw line. They said, D'Lo, we don't want you. That was funny. <laughs> Hawks fans can be savage sometimes when they want to be. Terry and Prince, former Hawk, seven and night. Jackson Hayes, six points. Pretty good job for the Hawks to not allow other guys to beat them because that's been also a theme of the Hawks. Sometimes it's not even the stars, it's the other guys that beat you. And tonight, that really didn't happen. Vanderbilt had four. Hakamura had 16, but only Christian Wood only had nine. Christie had four. I mean, they really didn't get as much production from other guys tonight. Like I said, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, now obviously the Lakers didn't have Anthony Davis, and that's obviously a big blow because he's their he's their best or second best player, depending on how you feel. Um, but tonight, Hawks took care of business. They got healthy. They showed what they could do, and they were able to get a successful win. I mean, I mean, they shot fifty two percent from the field, forty two percent from three, eighty nine percent from the free throw line. Lakers were terrible tonight at the free throw line, by the way, fifty six percent for the Lakers tonight just got off from the free throw line. Only had 12 turnovers, 32 assists, 46 rebounds, 12 offensive rebounds. I mean, that tells you the Hawks pretty much dominated in the stats and in and, and all the major categories, um, which led to such a controlling win for them to almost drop a 440 on the Lakers and to get a win like this, putting the Hawks on a two-game winning streak before they go and defend home court Friday against the Phoenix Suns, another Western Conference team, because they have a stretch of Western Conference teams coming up with the Suns, the Clippers, and also the Warriors. So good win tonight for sure for the team. Um, just wanted to confirm and check this real quick. Kobe Bufkin did have his first NBA bucket tonight. So big for him to get that first point as a rookie. Congratulations to him. Hopefully he will be a part of this team and what they plan to do in the future. But, yeah, so overall, Hawks did what they needed to do tonight, man. Really, 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 really play well. And, you know, they, 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 they played the way that, like I said, they played when they're at full strength. They could get, they have, I mean, people have said the Hawks have one of the best top eights in the game when they're healthy. It's just, once you get past that, you don't really have a lot left. And that's usually where the issues come from that. So good win tonight from the Hawks, from that perspective and good win over the Lakers um, defending home court against them. There was a lot of Laker fans in State Farm Arena tonight, and they were able to take the crowd out of the game by kind of getting in control of the game at the end of that first quarter and then just kind of taking it out uh, for the rest of the game, just taking it home. And uh, for our home fans that actually came to support the team and win. So big for them. But now we got to get in, you know, we got to get into trade rumors, basically. We always got to do trade rumors. So, so apparently, recently, Latest update on Hawks trade rumors. Um, there's apparently not a lot going on right now. Um, apparently, the Lakers and Hawks have not talked um, in a minute. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's just guys got it. They, they stop talking, and they'll talk close to the deadline, which is coming up on February 8th. Um, but so far, th- nothing major has happened. So some people are starting to wonder, is there a chance the Hawks might stay put at the deadline? Like, what what is it looking like? I think people are very curious to kind of know, okay, so what what is about to happen with this team? What is about to happen with this organization from a roster perspective? Because, you know, yeah, people who've joked, who said, what the Hawks are going to do is they're going to win like five in a row because they're fully healthy. And then they're like, oh, well, maybe we should keep the team. And, do, 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 do. and listen, I think everybody agrees there still should be a move that is made just because you need death. And if DeAndre or someone else gets hurt again, you're going to be right back where you were. And you need to change that if you can. So that will be big to, to be able to do. Uh, Because, you know, as of right now, the Hawks are sitting in the 10th spot in the Eastern Conference, the last spot in the play, and just a half game above the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn currently has the tiebreak on the Hawks so far. So they're only two games out of ninth, and then I believe only four games out of eighth. So, you know, it's it's possible the Hawks could even get to seven with the Heat losing seven in a row so far. The Hawks go on a run. You're only five games out. You know, you, you could 
make that run um, hypothetically. But um, there was an interesting quote from Mark Stein um, talking about apparently Quinn Snyder has been lobby- lobbying to keep DeAndre Hunter. Not DeAndre Hunter. Why did I just say that? <laughs> I mean, shoot, he might be. He's in Trey Rivers too. But nah, Deshante Murray. Um, which was interesting to me. When I tweeted about it, I said, so the head coach and the front office aren't on the same page. But then other people were saying this could just be a, a tactic to get teams to be like, we're not desperate to get rid of DeJounte. We're not, we're not desperate. We, 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 we would actually keep him here. You know, if you really want him, you really got to give something up for him. You know, and, and you know, I, I thought about that and I was like, hmm, what is true? Because right now, I said, Trey, when you get to this time of the year, you have so many rumors that come out. You don't know what's true. You don't know who telling the truth, who, what is accurate, what, what is the correct information, who's just leaking something to leak something. It's very tricky around this time of year. But I... I could see Quinn doing that because I, 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 I personally, part of me really feels like Quinn thinks if my team was fully healthy, we would be much better right now. And so he really wants to see it through with the group and be like, I want to see if, if they had this record that they have currently at full strength, then you would have seen what you needed to see. But I feel like with Quinn, he may view things from a perspective of, you know, we've had injuries. We had some things happen. That's been one of the reasons why we have struggled. Uh, that's why we've lost games. That's why our record is where they where it is right now. I think if we were fully healthy, we might be better. Uh, we might be a more competitive team. You know, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you've heard before in earlier reports that the Hawks don't have to trade DeJounte. They can king on to him. He is still under contract. He just signed a four-year extension. There is no, he's a free agent next year. We got to move him now pressure. It's literally just, let's get the best deal for DeJounte. You know? Because, like, for one of the main things we haven't gotten out of this trade uh, circuit trade outlet is how badly do the Hawks want to move off of him? Now, I know the tweet came out with the DM leaks and it seemed like DeJounte was unhappy and just his role and what he's doing. And, you know, we've, we've talked about him going rogue and, you know, things like that in the last episode and, you know, but, and so people were like, well, why would you want to keep a player who did that? You know? So that's why some people think it's cap. It's just something the league got there to make it seem they're not desperate, but we really, like I said, don't know how badly they want to move DeJounte. They just know DeJounte can get the most back out of all the assets that they are open to moving. But we're so close to the deadline now. Deadline is basically next week. And there is no strong indication that we're going to move someone. You know? It, it, it's just, you, you heard 10 teams for DeJounte Murray, and now you're still just hearing the Lakers. And so, like, did the Bucks drop out? Did the Nets drop out? Um, I know someone teased the three-team trade with the Nets where we would get Spencer Dinwiddie and some picks back. Like I've said, one thing I've learned about trades is that people just make a determination. They like a trade if they like the pick or they like the players. If they don't like the players, they think the trade is bad. If they love the players, they think the trade is good. If they like the picks, they think the trade is great. You know? But it's interesting to, to, to kind of think about that and think okay so like what where are we at right now with that you know we just heard today another rumor uh bogdan bogdanovich potentially minnesota is interested in him maybe interested in acquiring his services i've said give me Jaden mcdaniels or give me nas reed shoot we'll give you click appella he's viewed as a backup center anyway so <laughs> I mean, like like legitimately like you mean nas reed uh, nas reed uh, yucca kongu in my center we're great we're fantastic. We're, we're just, we're doing dandy. So, um, you know, and the Jamie Daniels is just cause he's an elite, uh, defender. So, I mean, you can immediately plug in manager too. He's a bigger wing. And so, you know, if you can't, 
it'll, it'll be weird for him to come off the bench probably, but I mean, he brings you a, de- a defense that you don't really have right now in that position. So, you know, if that was, if that was a move that they were looking into, that's who I would potentially want from, from Minnesota. I mean, I don't know who, what you guys think if that was a trade that they really wanted to make, who would you want from Minnesota in return for bogey? Uh, you know, just you can answer that down below. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where you hear these rumors. You're going to probably hear some smaller things. I mean, we've heard, like I said, some Hunter stuff. We've heard some Clint stuff. I mean, it, it, it there is no firm just this is the deal. I mean, because it feels like everybody's waiting for the DeJounte Murray deal to be done, but we don't actually know if that deal will get done. It's uh, It's pretty interesting, to say the least. At least in my opinion, it's interesting to know if that is a move, like I said, that's going to be made here. So something to keep an eye on in terms of trade rumors um, for DeJounte, because like I said, he played well tonight. And like I said, if he's trying out for the Lakers, I mean, shoot, if he plays well, that only benefits the Hawks technically. You know? So... It'll be interesting to kind of see what happens with that. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what that ends up being. As, you know, we're going to continue to update. I'm going to continue to update you guys on any trade rumors we get just because, you know, we got to talk about them. They're all exploratory, you know, and just see if there's actually a, a decision that is actually made and if a move actually happens. So we're going to have to see about that for sure. But, you know, things happen. So in terms of everything else that's happening in the league right now, we're going to do a little around the league recap. I've tried to, you know, be more invested in some other league stuff that's going on. Uh, Warriors tonight beating the 76ers, 119-107. Warriors coming to, to, to Atlanta in a couple of games. Saturday, to be exact, that's the second game of a back-to-back. So, you know, that's a team that they got to look at. Uh, Raptors win tonight over the Bulls, 118 to 107. Celtics beat the Pacers, 129 to 124. And the Knicks beat the Jazz, 118 to 103. Jazz actually has been playing pretty well um, outside of the last couple of games. Actually, that's a lie. They went on that six game winning streak and then they've kind of fell off. Uh, in some close games, you know, people have been ringing up John Collins and how he's played. I made a joke last week. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw it, if y'all haven't followed me on Twitter. It was a joke last week I made. They said that the Jazz, they were another team that was interested uh, in DeJounte Murray, potentially. And they were talking about trying to pair someone up with Lori Marketing. So I was like, the Hawks have the funniest thing, could do the funniest thing ever. Because legitimately, I was thinking they literally could trade for John Collins back in return for for Dejounte Murray. It, it's just it it just be it would be the funniest thing ever if they did that because it's like you trade this man away and then you trade for him back just so you can get off Dejounte when you wanted to get off John's contract and now you're taking it back. It's the funniest thing ever. Um, and the funniest thing too about that too is if they want to do that, they technically couldn't. I was told in the comments, like legit. I think if you trade a player from the team that you they were with, and you want them back, you can't re-require them until the next year, like the next off season, wherever you traded for them. So they realistically could not actually trade back for John Collins if they wanted to. But it was just funny to think about that. Oh yeah, they could just get John Collins back just to get off the John T. Murray. <laughs> funny, but um, yeah. So. But that was around the NBA tonight. But like I said, Hawks, uh, like I said, have a tough game coming up Friday. Um, they have the Suns, so they get two days off between this game and the next. Suns coming in here right now, playing some really good basketball. They seem to be catching their stride. You know, they they're 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 getting healthy. I mean, that's that's really the big thing. They got their big three back. You know, they won. Seven in a row, lost two in a row, then beat the Heat, um, which was a which was a good win for them. They play Brooklyn uh, Wednesday, 
So that you would think would be a win, and then they play us. So they're they're going to be a tough team to beat for sure. You know, coming in here, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Hawks got to be ready to go. Then, like I said, you got Golden State get a chance to make up for that last game. Uh, with Golden State blew out the Hawks in Golden State. And then, like I said, Monday you have the Clippers, who's playing some of the best basketball in the league right now at 13 and 15 right now as their overall record. So the Hawks have a tough schedule coming up because after that you have Boston and Philly. So if the Hawks can come out of this with a winning record over these next few games, that would be very impressive for them, especially going into the trade deadline. And like I said, trade deadline February 8th, mark that on your calendars. The last game the Hawks will play before that deadline, Wednesday against the Boston Celtics in Boston. So something to definitely keep an eye on, guys. And we're gonna, and I'll definitely stay on top of that for you. Um, like I guess if any breaking news happens, if I can't get a podcast out immediately, I'll try to get maybe a YouTube short or anything out for you guys so I can keep you guys updated on my thoughts on what's happening with this team right now. But like I said, very strong win tonight over the Lakers, 138 to 122, dominating the Lakers from start to finish and an all around team effort with the top eight becoming full again for, for the first time since I think late November. So we're going to have to see the Hawks continue this momentum against the Phoenix Suns on Friday. It's your boy Bryce Lewis. This was your Believe in Hawks podcast. We'll see you next time.